Okay. okay. Third is not like anyway. being a bad student. Third is being a great student. Um, okay. So today we're going to learn about inverse functions. On the board, it's just a quick review of pre-calc stuff about inverse functions. Inverse functions are functions where the x's and y's get swapped, which means the domains and ranges get swapped. The graphs are symmetric over the line y equals x, and we'll talk more about this in a minute. If f and g are inverse functions, that means f of g of x equals g of f of x, which equals x. To, for f to have an inverse, it has to be 1 to 1. 1 to 1 means that the function passes the horizontal line test. What's the horizontal line test? Well, it's just like the vertical line test, right? If you have a graph and it's something that looks like this, some weird graph, right? This graph would not be a function because the vertical line passes through it in more than one spot, right? Okay, yeah, free. That's, that should be that for Halloween, right? Well, okay, that graph. That All right. <laughs> However, here's the thing. Because when you take a graph uh, of a function and its inverse, because of this symmetry, say for example we graph the graph of like x squared plus 5. So say this is y equals x squared plus 5. When you graph its inverse, what happens is you've got this line y equals x, and so all the x's become y's, all the y's become x's, and it takes the graph, and it doesn't just rotate it, it actually <coughs> rotates it and flips it over. So it does both. It's, oh it's actually going like that, right? So it's the combination of a reflection and a rotation when you move the graph over this way and you get that symmetry. So anyway, if this graph, the original graph, fails the horizontal line test, then the inverse, since it gets that, you have that rotation, is going to fail the vertical line test. Does that make sense? Yeah. So an original function, for it to have an inverse, it has to be what's called monotonic. Monotonic means it only goes in one direction. It has to be always increasing or always decreasing. As soon as you change direction, you fail that horizontal line test. Okay? Now, what we can do for a function like this, which I think you're asked to do a couple times in your homework, is you can restrict the domain. So say I graph this function and I really wanted to get that inverse. What I could do is say, well, let's take this function and just graph the values where x is positive. If we do that, then our inverse would end up becoming a function, right? So there's a couple times in your homework tonight, I think, where you're asked to restrict a domain. It, it doesn't matter. You could have picked the negatives, right? It, I like the positives. It's easier. But, uh, but anyway, where you're asked to restrict a domain so that the function will have an inverse. And you just, you just talk about looking at the graph, cutting off the domain so that it passes the horizontal line test. So the horizontal line test is just like the vertical test, except it's horizontal. Yeah. So a function has to pass the horizontal line test in order for its inverse to also be a function. Are you recording? I am recording. Yeah. Yeah, it's over there. All right. So anyway, monotonic. Monotonic means the function is always increasing or always decreasing. You can kind of think of it as meaning one directional. One direction. Yes. How would we know if a function was monotonic? How do we know if a function is always increasing? What tells us if a function is increasing? In behaviors. Oh, uh, In this mean, class. But, but, uh, the first derivative. We would find the first derivative and make a sine, sine, sine line. And if it's always positive or always negative, then the function is monotonic. Right? Okay. So anyway, so this is just a little pre-calc schmattering there. All right? Okay. So the first thing you guys have to be able to do, which will be on your quiz on Friday, is you have to be able to find an inverse. Let's put it as a second step. 
Whoa, what was that stuff? Can you say that a bit louder? Okay. To find an inverse, you swap x and y, and then you solve for y. Swap x and y, solve for y. We're going to talk about domain and range in a minute. But to find an inverse, you swap x and y, and you solve for y. Because the x's and y's swap for inverse functions. So, for example, find the inverse of y equals, let's do f of x just to throw you off. f of x equals 6x plus 2. Okay, first thing you have to do is do what? Swap x, Swap x and y. But there is no y. No. Yes, you just give up. F of x is y. Oh, f of oh, x wait. is y. That's a y. Okay, so we have x equals 6y plus 2. Subtract the 2 and divide by 6, and y is x minus 2 over 6. Ooh, got the one right. I you got it right? That, I feel like that was a really easy one. Though. That was a pretty darn easy one. Wouldn't you have to put it back in terms of f and x? You, you leave it as well, you would, if you want to write it in function notation, you would write f inverse of x. That little negative 1 exponent is what we use for inverse functions. Oh, like sine negative 1. Yes, is this, yes same thing as arc sine. Yes. So you know, All right. Thanks all right, I want you guys to try this one start to finish. How about f of x equals the square root of x minus 5 plus 3. I want you to take a minute and find the inverse. Well, some surprise. Have you ever seen a? Uh, have you ever seen the undercover bosses? No. no. That's a good show. I highly invest. Yeah. Neck fits again for like Xfinity or UTV or YouTube in it or Hulu Plus or just Hulu regular. Apple TV in it. Google Chrome, Access Box, Amazoning it. Google Play, keeping it. I don't know what that is, but apparently Mustafa said that was a thing. Yeah, you. I highly remember watching puzzles in general. Okay, first step: swap x and y. Subtract three. What do I do now? Square. Square both sides. So on the left, do I get x squared minus nine? No. I, it was funny because I had someone who yelled at first period. No, you get x squared plus 9, right? <laughs> 9 times negative is positive. Okay. No, you square both sides, which means you have to square the whole side. That's how I left it like that. I don't work it. Right? I did x squared. Oh, look at all the erasing going on. And then you add 5. So y is x minus 3 squared plus 5. You don't have to foil it out. No, don't foil it. Okay. Okay. Why? Because that looks lovely. This is actually in vertex form, right? Yeah. I love vertex form for problems. I don't know what that means, but okay. Right, you HK, remember? Oh, okay, yeah. Right, three and then up five now. I know the, I didn't know the proper term. Okay. So anyway, there's a second thing that you have to be able to do when you find an inverse on Friday and tomorrow. By the way, tomorrow, which is our review day. I made a kind of a practice quiz. You're going to be working on it in your groups. You'll all have different versions. Bonus and points. you will get some bonus points for it, depending on how well you do. Okay? All right. So anyway, uh, suppose I asked you to find the domain of the inverse. Okay, can you all stop talking for a moment? Take a look at this function. Without knowing anything else, just from this function itself, just say I said, hey guys, what's the domain of this function? What would you say? Negative, 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 
It's negative infinity to infinity. It's all reals, right? It's a quadratic, all reals. Okay, so this has a domain of all reals on its own. But in the context of this being the inverse of this, the domain of this function is not all reals. So this is a new note. I want you to write this down as a note. The domain of the inverse must equal the blank of the original function. Very good. The range, range of the original function. Because the x's and y's switch, right? So the domain of the inverse is the range of the original function. Look at this original function. The domain of the original function would be 5 to infinity, right? Because you can't have a negative under a radical. Okay. So it's an easy domain. Range is a little bit trickier. Very good. Wow, people are so fast. Okay. They're yelling out 3 to infinity, and they're correct. How did they get that? Yeah, so the next square root is just the infinity. Okay, but I'm talking about the, the first. How did you know that it could only be the 3 was the lowest value? Um, because um, 5 is the lowest value in the domain, and if you talk about it, you get 0. So. That was very lovely. Yes, very well put. Okay, guys, this function is monotonic, it's always increasing, which means. If you plug in the lowest value of the domain, you'll get the lowest value of the range. Or you could just think about it. What is the lowest value that a square root can ever equal? Zero. 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 Can never be negative, right? So the square root of x minus 5, the lowest y value that this thing could ever possibly be is 0, and then we're adding 3 to it. So the lowest value the function as a whole could be is 3. Does that make sense? For for functions that are monotonic, functions with inverses that are functions, if you plug in the lowest and highest values of the domain, you'll get the lowest and highest values of the range. If we plug in infinity, we get infinity, right? So since the domain is 5 to infinity, you plug in the 5 and you plug in the infinity and your range is 3 to infinity. Okay. So anyway, so the domain of the inverse is 3 to infinity. And it includes the 3, because the root can be 0. Does that make sense? Yes. Good. Right. All right, it's time to find derivative of an inverse. We have like five minutes. I think we can do this. I think we can too. I don't think it's that hard actually, I'm going to be honest. It looks pretty simple. Now, obviously, if you can find an inverse function, then you can just find the inverse and then differentiate, right? Whoops. This method is really used for functions where you can't easily find the inverse, which is obviously all the ones that we're going to give you, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. There are two ways to write it. So first I'm going to write it just in F notation. So the derivative of an inverse would be F inverse prime of X. The derivative of the inverse of F of X. It's a formula. It's derived easily from this little concept right here. The F of G of X equals X. But I don't think we have time right now to do it. Whoops. I can't talk and write. That's all right. Okay. I Here can't we go. walk and chew gum at the same time. F inverse prime of x is okay. 1 over f prime of f inverse of x. Now, if they give you f and g notation, suppose g equals f inverse then g prime equals 1 over f prime of g of x. You are only going to be asked to do this when you have 
a specific x value. All right? I'm going to give you steps. Because using this formula can be a little confusing. So here you, let's see, to find if g equals f <coughs> inverse, to find g prime of a, step one. You're going to set f equal to a and solve for x using guess and check. The number's always going to be a real simple little number. Now, and a lot of times they tell you what the answer is. Step two. Find f prime. Step three, find f prime of whatever you got from step one. And step four, you have to take the reciprocal. I just say flip it. And there's the bell. Okay, guys, I'm going to finish these notes after class today, and I'll put it online. I wish we had.